You can hang on for another 30 seconds. I'm going to bump it up. Come on, Tyler. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on, Tyler. Come on, Tyler. 25 seconds. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go, 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 go. Come on, Tyler. Come on, Tyler. Keep us going. Keep us going. Keep us going. So, what is a VO2 max test? What's it good for? How are you supposed to use it? Why do you even want to get it done? So basically, a VO2 max test is done with uh, some equipment. It's a stationary trainer. I was uh, lucky enough to get in with Felicia over at Pinnacle Training Systems. And um, so they hook up my bike to a stationary trainer, increasing resistance over a set period of time. So they were going to up it, I think, by like 15 watts or, or 10 watts every, uh, every minute. So while I'm going through, while I'm smashing the pedals, they have this huge contraption on my head uh, that I'm breathing through. My nose is plugged, and it's got like a snorkel uh, nozzle that's in my mouth. And what they're measuring is the volume of oxygen uh, and the concentration of carbon dioxide, what I'm exhaling. So basically, they put this huge headgear on me. Uh, they put a carb strap mat monitor on me, and they're, you know, they're this nice little computer, and they're seeing all my numbers. And uh, I'm starting it. It's pretty easy. Um, I don't have my power meter on, so I can't see what I'm producing. Um, so I'm kind of running blind. But uh, uh, they can, and they can see what I'm doing. And they're in control uh, of it the whole time. What was really crazy is how it felt on the trainer. It didn't feel like you were on the road. It felt like um, you were almost just kind of pedaling through sand a little bit. Like if you were to let off on the pedals, it was like almost just stop. So it definitely took a little getting used to with this. A uh, big tube coming out of my face and uh, the pedaling feeling kind of weird. So Felicia slowly started to increase the power uh, over time. Every minute it was getting a little harder and a little harder and a little harder. Uh, as it started to get really hard, uh, it, her encouragement just came through the roof. It was uh, she was really doing a good job of keeping me motivated. Come on, come on, come on, come on, go, 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 go. come on, Tyler. Because um, the VO2 max, I, I need to. Need to go as hard as I can. I need to push myself basically to to failure almost, right? So Felicia can see on her computer my whole graph and everything that's going on, my power and what I'm producing, uh, you know, through my lungs, basically how much carbon dioxide starting to build up and uh, and my uptake of oxygen. And she's starting to say like, okay, you know, just go 30 seconds more, 30 seconds more. So like with every breath, I'm actually counting. I'm like one, two. You know, I'm trying so hard because I am suffering here towards the end, and uh, I, I, you know, I can't see what I'm producing, but I, I feel like I'm just off the charts, you know, power-wise, uh, which ended up not being the case, but definitely felt like it. Felt like I was going to break the stationary trainer, and so I'm just so mentally in like I have 30 seconds left, and then I don't know, maybe five seconds before I get there, because I'm counting in my head, right? Uh, Fleech says, "Okay, we're going to bump it up another." you know, 10 watts, and uh, you need to go as long as, and as hard as you can. I'm just like, <laughs> I, was, I was done. I was ready to be, I was I was over it. And so it's like, oh, man. So then I, you know, get into it, and I have to completely mentally regroup to just go even harder. And uh, and I get about 30 seconds in, and I'm just like, I'm blowing this test away. I'm so amazing. And then she's like, okay, I'm bumping you up again. And I'm just like, no, no, I don't want to be bumped up again. Like, I tell me I'm doing amazing. And uh, it was, you know, so I went as hard as I could and, uh, you know, got to the point where basically I, my, my graph was leveling off and that was it. I, I went as hard as I could. So I start spinning down after the test and I'm, uh, I, I'm nervous to see the numbers because really what I am, my hypothesis, right, is that my VO2 max is extremely low because I'm not, I'm not a very good cyclist. You know, I, I train pretty hard and uh, I haven't really had many, much results. Right? I, never really won, and it's frustrating. So basically what I get is some good news and some bad news. Good news is that I have an extremely high VO2 max. I got 82.5. So to put that in comparison, uh, again, like I said, a, a healthy athlete, like an excellent VO2 max for a, a cycling athlete would be somewhere in the, you know, between 50 to 75. Um, I got an 82. Five, which Lance Armstrong was in 84. So my VO2 max, the motor that I have inside me is gigantic. The bad news is 
system not using that motor at all. Uh, that I'm using 75% of my motor. So my power and my threshold, which is what you know is a good indicator for performance, is actually what you produce, not what your potential is. Uh, was extremely low. Um, you know, I was like my threshold was between uh, 280 to, to 325. It's with that zone. So before my VO2 max, you know, I had a power meter. I got a stages power meter from Clovis Bike Company. And uh, I, I did a few of the 20 minute tests that they say you can do to try to find your FTP, functional threshold power. And I was so uh, depressed with what my power numbers were that I kind of just ignored it. I was like, no, nah, I'm probably 320 is probably what my, you know, my threshold was. Um, I could never really hit that. And so, therefore, when I told my coach my numbers, uh, my training, was overreaching. I was overreaching all the time and I was failing to complete the workouts. Uh, one one workout I was given, based off what numbers I told them, it's all percentages, and it was like do 380 watts for five minutes, five times. And I think I did it twice and then puked. <laughs> that was it. I mean, I was just not able to finish the workouts. So once I got my VO2 max, my numbers, I mean, it's it's just science, right? It's just exactly what you what your body can do uh, at that moment. So then Tony was able to write an amazing program for me that ended up actually feeling really easy. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I can do I can do this watts no problem. But that's the point that you don't want to overreach. You want to be able to know exactly what you can do. So when you're doing the workouts, you're completing the full sets and uh, again, you're not overreaching and you're not taxing your body too much to where then fatigue builds up and uh, you can't you know, ride for the rest of the week or you can't hit the, the numbers that you are uh, needing to hit. So overall, if you really want to take your cycling to the next level, you get a power meter, probably a stages. They're the cheapest and that's you know, a stage is just the way to go. Uh, you get your VO2 max done so that you know exactly what your numbers are. You plug that into your your, your Garmin, so you know um, what your zones are. And then you get a coach. Get someone to help you develop a program. Get someone that knows you, that knows your riding style, that you can interact with and tell them, hey, this this workout was too easy, you know, and uh, or this workout was too hard. You know, you work with them to dial in a program just for you. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Get a power meter. Get your VO2. Get a coach. Let's go crush some hills and uh, see you on the road.